coconut. Captain's log, star date 7403.6. Stop pretending to do a captain's log! I saw that, but I don't believe it. A Vendorian doctor. A uh, shapeshifter? Ah, uh, Look, I can set you up with somebody great on the Cerritos. There's that Felosian and Tactical. She seems like a nice plant person. Intelligent plants? Orion's little game of neutrality and piracy is over. For your information, many Orions haven't been pirates for over five years! Time to take this puppy off its leash! Warp me! Hello, interwebs. How are you doing? And welcome to Drawn to Trek, a uh, series where we talk about all the animated forms of Star Trek. And this week, we are talking about the latest episode of Star Trek Lower Decks, Season 2, Episode 6, The Spy Humong Us. And I am joined, as ever, by the <laughs> wonderful and amazing Aaron Harvey, who I just noticed. Uh, you oh, you can't you. hear this because this is a podcast, but I literally just noticed you're wearing the hologram emitter on your shoulder, and I totally missed that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, my it's in my EMH, so I figure when uh, you know if I leave the the confines of my yard, mm-hmm. I won't disappear. Yeah, I think because th- that's that's always a worry. <laughs> it is, is do you think like this whole pandemic has just been like a ruse to like keep us in our hologram like stations? Like, oh, we can't leave the house or else we'll just like turn off the hologram grid. <laughs> Yep, that's uh, it's 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 because they have to do a system update, mm. and if they don't get a system, you know, because they so they're trying to just do it bits by bit by bit, and then as soon as nobody has COVID, it's just it's then we're like, oh, it's all been rebooted, so we're fine. <laughs> I mean, Go out and live your life. <laughs> that's the cons- that's the only conspiracy theory that I'll attest to, but that's very much like that falls in like <laughs> the, we're all in a simulation matrix sort of thing, which you know. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That was a joke in college. I lived downtown uh, Los Angeles, and we were in a very a brand new, super clean, almost computer drawn sort of building because everything was white and had, it just looked very fake. We were mm-hmm. in the pool, and it was like I don't know if it was an earthquake or something, but just basically the water sort of had a really strong jolt, and it just sort of like had a line. And my friend's like, "Did the water just glitch? Because <laughs> that's what it looked like." <laughs> so we're like, "Oh, we are, we are in a simulation." <laughs> it's so, all a yeah. lie. So, it's all uh, a lie. Sure. Oh, I think God. that's what. That's... <laughs> yeah, yeah no, we're, we're all holograms in our own uh, deck. It's all fine. Yes. <laughs> Uh, well, I, uh, well, uh, if I could change my surrounding, that would be fantastic. I would love oh, to be able to, yeah. to alter my hologram. Or like just alter my family, like that one episode of uh, Voyager, where like just like, hey, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. no, I create my perfect family, and and you know, yell at my kid for hanging out with Klingons and all that. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Yeah. I actually really like that episode. It's it's a great episode, but it does kind of make you cry with a gun to your head. Is like the whole idea is like, and now we're mm-hmm. going to have a kid die. You better weep, you <laughs> bastards. <laughs> I feel for that kid more so than some of the other characters sometimes, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a very, it's a very well. No, it's a, it's a very good episode, but it's just sort of like, oh god, yeah. oh god, just going for it's, the. Gut it's bump. manufactured. It's, yeah. it's, it's as artificial as the family. I mean, to be fair, yeah, I was, yeah, I was gonna say. I mean, it is manufactured, but I mean, so is the whole concept. So that's fair. Yeah. 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 Um. Yeah. But. All right. I was trying to think of a way to like trans. It was like speaking of holograms, but there's no, there's no yeah. hologram <laughs> no. stuff in this episode. Uh, but well, we do have the Packlets calling her Captain Janeway. Ah, so there you that's go. Their hologram. Speaking of yeah. ships that Captain Janeway <laughs> captains, uh, <laughs> let's talk about yeah. the actual episode, <laughs> "The Spy Among Us," the latest episode of Star Trek: Lower Decks. Um, we'll go through piece by piece, but I guess we'll sort of start off with just general thoughts. What do you What do you think of the episode? I it was one of those. You know, hey, it's middle of the road. I feel like we've reached that point of the series where we can have an episode that isn't massively plot driven, and it's not like bad or b- by any means. It's just sort of like, oh, it's a it's a good episode. I don't have any like strong feelings, kind of one way or another. I enjoyed it, and uh, there's a couple times I just laughed out loud. So yeah, yeah. I I am pretty I, much I liked it. I am pretty much on the exact same wavelength as you on that. In that like. This is not an episode that's like, oh, if I if I think back like years from now on Star Trek Lower Decks of like the most memorable episodes, the ones that I'm going to love, it's like I'm never going to point to this one is like, oh, yeah. But this is mm-hmm. the one of the ones that like if I'm just like 
wanting to pop on an episode of Lower Decks and want to just have an episode where I get to hang out with the characters and enjoy just spending time with them, this is the episode that I pop on. Yeah. It's like there's a lot of that and there's a lot of those types of episodes in Next Gen, Deep Space Nine, and Voyager, and even Enterprise. Um, mm-hmm. Some would even argue Enterprise has too many of them. But um, that are just like <laughs> quaint little fun things. And, and honestly, it's episodes like this that – while they aren't super standout, there's something that I kind of miss from Discovery and Picard, whereas, like, those shows are just so heavily mm-hmm. plot-driven and, like, everything, every scene, every plot needs to, like, drive yeah. towards the larger narrative that they – we don't get a lot of times to just have downtime with the characters. And so while this episode, again, isn't, like, super Yeah, if I wanted to go back and watch yeah. Discovery, I wouldn't be able to just grab an episode and, and throw it in. A few of them, maybe, but – yeah, I mean, like, the only one that I can even think of is, like, some of some of season three of Discovery I can kind of pop on for one-offs, but, like, the only one I can even instantly think of is, like, oh, that's a kind of a fun one to put on is the time loop episode from season one. It's really yep. the only, like, one-off I yep, could really exactly. think of. Um, which, I mean, again, the, I mean, it's just a different type of storytelling, but it is something that I, I kind of miss in, in just the storytelling mm-hmm. form. And so, yeah, I, I, I think, like, this is a fun episode. I have a few critiques, but I, there's also some really great moments, and I think... We, I think that while the, some of the plots are fairly standard, like sitcom affair, I do think that there's some subtlety to them <laughs> that I, yeah, that I enjoyed, uh, that we can t- we'll get into as we go through it. But uh, mm-hmm. so I, I don't think it's like bad by any means. I just I just think it's a nice quaint no. episode that I really enjoyed. Yeah, it has a very I don't say retro feeling, but it just has a very comfortable feeling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like putting on a nice pair of socks, you know? It's like a nice pair of socks mm-hmm. episode, you know? <laughs> it's not like, I'm not going out. I'm not strutting around in my in my, in my my Sunday best, but it's like, yeah, it's just, just, this is just, this, this, just lazing around the house enjoying myself sort of episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Should we uh, dive into the plot? Yeah. Do you want to start think... with, uh, do you want to, do you want to break it up like we kind of normally do? Or? Yeah, I think, it, especially for this one, because this one is, I mean, it does kind of come together a little bit between Boimler and Tendi at the end, that those two plots, but I think most of these mm-hmm. are fairly segmented. I think probably the best one to start off with would be the, um, Captain Freeman, or as the Packleds would say, Captain Janeway uh, plot. <laughs> Janeway. Because that's uh, the the sort of like what would typically be like the A plot affair or like the bridge crew stuff going on in this episode is we have F- Captain Freeman uh, mm-hmm. going to Packled Planet, which is what they actually named their planet, which is <laughs> perfect, uh, to try to negotiate a uh, basically a ceasefire with Packleds, which is sort of the ongoing uh, storyline in the background of this whole season, uh, even even starting last season with the Packlets kind of being at war with the Federation. And so she's there to negotiate a ceasefire, and it also feeds into her arc this season where she's sort of gunning for a promotion because she sort of sees this as her chance to, at least as Shaq says, possibly get herself an Enterprise uh, if she, if she sort yeah. of pulls this off. Uh, so she has some stakes in this too, and I like that sort of continuing both of those threads and sort of having them come to a head here. Um and it's the lower decks, upper decks. Exactly, exactly. Um, I, yeah, I do. I do like that. It's something we we don't really talk about too much, but I like the fact that even the upper deckers are still lower deckers within the ranks of Starfleet. I mean, that came up like last episode too, yeah. in episode five, where they're all just hanging out because they can't get into the party. <laughs> exactly. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, I I just sort of like kind of run through this and then I'll, I'll sort of open up to your thoughts. I, I mean, I felt like this whole storyline was probably the weakest one for me. Uh, just because it was kind of predictable. Like, I never hated it. It was never bad. But it all it felt a little bit kind of like, okay, I see where this is going to go. There's going to be some frustratingness mm-hmm. uh, with her being able to communicate with them and, and not being able to talk to them. And then we kind of learned that there is a uh, Packlet who appears on the Cerritos who's supposedly asking for asylum, but is just very clearly... <laughs> Uh, a spy <laughs> my favorite moment of that was when he like takes a picture of his own foot <laughs> yeah <laughs> i love that and it reflects in the in the glass too so like everything it's just like oh, it just never would be a good photo yep yep so it's okay. it's hysterical show us your crimson force field <laughs> it's like how does the how do the transporters work yeah it was great um yeah, yeah. and i also i liked seeing uh so so that basically is the sort of crux of it is that there's a supposed spy yeah. on the ship and and freeman's trying to get to t- figure out how the packlids work which i like seeing elements of their culture like they have like different sized helmets and stuff yeah um and it was also nice to see Kayshawn <laughs> getting to do stuff up back on yes. the ship because he's been kind yep. of relegated to the background ever since he was first introduced since Shax is back so it was nice to see him getting to do things i like but it, it, i guess his version of the the word crap or whatever it would be the uh 
uh, Cindy with his eyes red. <laughs> yeah. said that be- that's the- I think he said that before. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I love that we're learning uh, that that language, a little bit Tamarian. Yeah, exactly. I, I liked uh, what was the one. I, I don't remember the phrase, but it was, it was like, you getting a kind of da 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 vibe off of this guy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Something with the, the, the veil re- uh, lifted or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was, it was, I loved that bit. So, um, yeah. And I love that Jack is like, yeah, I totally get it. Like, he just, like, he, he now knows what that means, or at least he's from context gets it. Yeah, so. exactly. It was, it was really, I, I like, again, I like those subtle beats where it's just like, it, like, these characters are idiosyncratic and, and strange, but they, like, still have that star feeling, like, yeah, we, we respect other people's languages mm-hmm. and, 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 and culture and sort of stuff. So I, I like that little bit. Um, but yeah, the rest of this yeah. was all fairly standard. It was not bad by any means. The they sort of like lose track of him, uh, which is, causes Freeman <laughs> issues. That Freeman's also dealing with like essentially a mini revolution on the planet, which was like kind of like, like everything happened at once. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I actually kind of liked that bit because it, it, again, it was fairly standard, but it was all like it was like revolutionary and uh, like uh, revolu- It was like revolutionary dynamics for dummies. Very clearly it was mm-hmm. just like oh we there's an emperor there's a king oh no well, there's the group a rebel group that's going to take over and say no more with the he- with the helmets and need for power but then one of the revolutionaries takes over and becomes a dictator very quickly it was yeah. it was like yeah that 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 sometimes is how that goes <laughs> It's the Voyager episode with the planet that went really, really fast, but just with with the pack list. Exactly. And they're, they're so social evolution at a very fast speed, but not really evolving. Exactly. Exactly. It's just like the same, just the same cycles over and over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I thought that that was that was pretty fun. Um, but other than that, like the rest of it is we get the spy ends up pooping on the uh, or needed to use the bathroom <laughs> and and doing something unspeakable yes. in the uh in the airlock which he thought was a bathroom and sending him out into space um which then fl- yeah apparently they're also very they have really good physiology because they survived in space for like a half hour or something yeah i thought that that was almost really because yeah there's that shot where like he's floating by outside i'm like oh god that's mm-hmm. dark uh but thankfully uh he yeah. lived and so it was all fine and then freeman's able to trick him into revealing his their plan uh <laughs> to attack earth so yeah for for me, it was we funny. about the but... Veruvian bomb. So we got the Veruvian uh, thing again from a couple episodes ago. Yeah. I mean, for me, that was that that was everything I kind of feel about it. It was, like, it was good. It was fun, but nothing particularly spectacular. Yeah. But yeah, I want to leave it open to, to you to say anything if there's anything you missed or felt about it. Yeah. Uh, but it was the first uh, Pac-Lid female that we saw, I believe. Oh, yeah, yeah, So yeah. that was interesting. That is true. Um, yeah. Uh, no, I, I liked it. I thought it was... I was one of those, you know, I'm looking at the design elements of their city and stuff like that, trying to like, how did these people make any of this? Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, obviously they've cobbled together, but I was kind of expecting their cities to look more cobbled together or something. But it looked all very uniform and like kind of made at one time. Um, so who knows how that, that happened. But no, I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was funny how they were so sure that they were tricking them. And you, you know, just the whole idea is like, we've 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 tricked Captain Janeway. Yeah, <laughs> she takes off after they've like, yeah, no, I, I, it, yeah, it was predictable, but it was fun. I think the way it was presented was good. If it, if it was done in a less successfully comedic way, it would just been like, okay, this is boring. You know, if this was an A plot in like a live action, I might be like, okay, let's let's get back to the the other plot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think my only knock against this plot, yeah, it, like on a substantive level and a substantive criticism, is it felt so divorced from the rest of the stuff. Whereas typically the mm. you know the other episodes of Lower Decks, they seem to do a better job of interweaving what the upper deckers yeah. are doing with the lower deckers. Where in this case, mm-hmm. it just felt very ancillary and and it's not necessarily a bad thing it's just something that i i lower decks is usually uh i don't want to say better at because it's again it's not necessarily a bad thing it's just they usually interweave their plots a little bit more together than he this one does I think that this goes along with the whole, oh, it's a comfortable middle of the road episode. Mm-hmm. But the fact that they don't overlap, I think that actually adds to that feeling. Mm-hmm. It's sort of like, oh, this thing's happening, that thing's happening, they all happen, and then it's over. Um, there's not a strong interweaving of the of the plots, so I think you get just that you can you can watch whatever section of the show you want. I know it's only like 22 minutes, so it's, <laughs> it's yeah. very brief. But um, yeah, I, I think that's where 
we're getting some of that from that's that feeling for me. Yeah. Yeah, no, I I definitely 100% agree with you on that. Um so moving on from that storyline, I think it's probably good to jump over to let's jump over to Tendy next because Boimler's okay. arc kind of finishes off Tendy so we'll we'll go to Tendy until yeah. she turns into a scorpion and then we'll then we'll go into that. <laughs> um so the, basically the entire group gets assigned to what was it anomaly reclamation uh duty ACD or yes. uh, anomaly co- ACD. Uh, um, anomaly collection duty um, anomaly collection duty yeah. yeah um and so basically they're uh basically everyone's kind of frustrated about it except for Tendy and Boimler uh, but Boimler kind of goes off and does his own thing as, for his own storyline. But uh, So that leaves Tendi, Rutherford, and Mariner to sort of go around to all of the Upper Deckers uh, crew or, uh, rooms and sort of get rid of all the quote-unquote anomalies that they've sort of collected from various missions. Anomaly consolidation duty. That's what That's it was. What it's Thank called. you. Right. Um, yeah, it was in my notes somewhere. <laughs> I, every time I hear, heard ACD, I just wanted to add a C. Like ACD, C. D. Yeah. C. Yeah, ACD, yeah. C. Mm-hmm. Uh, every single time. Uh, it's like thunder. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Um, I wanted them to make like have that C on there so it would be that, and they'd be like, so you that could just be the acronym, and then it'd be like it's an inside joke because we know what it is, mm-hmm. but it, it didn't happen. Yeah. Um, it just maybe it was like ah, oh, just say it, just say the thing. Um, <laughs> But uh, but anyway, so they're going around to the upper decks. It's basically a trash day, but Tendi <laughs> is very excited about it and and is trying to get everyone to be enthusiastic about it. A very Tendi way, exactly. Yep. Um, but Mariner and Rutherford are just not having it. And there's some there's some fun little again. It's just kind of like random one off gags where like Rutherford blows yeah. up like uh, like Willy Wonka, <laughs> <laughs> and Mariner gets like nanobots full, on full her hand. Uh, molecular engorgement or something like that yeah, it. yeah and like rutherford's freaking out about it but tenny's like oh my gosh you got yeah. engorged so quickly it was great <laughs> um, it was that like, great did it, what did it feel like and then you see later or like half a second later out the outside door view of them he she's he's obviously just thrown up <laughs> <laughs> yeah with like form they're so walking like, by like, he's like Wah. yeah um Speaking of which, like a lot of bodily fluids, not it, yeah. not not just just kind of overall this season, but especially this episode. Yeah, yeah, we'll get we'll get to it. Um, it didn't feel overly gross, though. I mean, some of it did, but not one. No, one did, and uh, we'll uh, we'll bring okay. it up because one did is the the okay. the screaming slug that they kind of like a screaming slug, <laughs> like going, Aah! which was great. I loved I loved yeah. that, that sound. It was wonderful. <laughs> but Tendy yeah. gets uh, Mariner Rutherford are just getting pissed off this entire time about it, um, and kind of like tamping yeah. down Tendy's enthusiasm. Them. And then Tendi uh, gets eaten by the slug, and eventually gets pooped out. And the color on the what's on her, you would think it's like the slime of slug, but it's just different enough. It's like no, that's that's clearly that's clearly fecal matter. Which, to be yeah. fair, I am not. I, I I will say I am not someone who gets that bothered by like fluids or, or gross out humor. I'm not really someone to get gross out poop. I'm not like the most grossed out by it, but poop is the one thing where I'm like, yeah, yeah. It's like so unsanitary. Um, exactly. That's what I was thinking. It's, it's the bacterial crap about it. Like, oh, the crap. Like, yeah, yeah. See, there you go. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, again, it, 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 it wasn't one of those, like, I'm so prudish where it's like, ugh, no. But it was, yeah, it yeah. was just sort no, of like, no. ugh, just a little, bit, little gross. It did not bother me in any way close to the Magato episode. Really? See, there the was, Magato like, episode was, didn't yeah. bother me at all. Like, I had zero oh, problems in the Magato episode. Just... <laughs> Maybe I just because I wasn't feeling well at the time. It could have been just be that like my you state already, of mind. You already have too many bodily fluids leaking, and yeah, like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, I, for me, it's just like I, I like vomit and and snot and all that jazz never really bothers me, uh, really at all. Uh, it's really just poop. tune into drawn to fluids. <laughs> right? I'm, yeah, the, the, you know, this is the conversation when I think Star Trek. What type of bodily fluids gross me out is definitely the type of conversation that I tune in for, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, where else are you going to get this kind of quality entertainment? Exactly. I mean, not you're not going to get it like on the actual, you know, official Star Trek podcast. Yeah, no, it's or, that stuff. Yeah. Or, you know, That's like, what you're yeah. here for. Star Trek Day? No, uh-uh. I think, Never hear that. I think this is like what Mike McMahon's goal probably is. I'm, I'm just assuming. <laughs> It's just like ah uh, yes, I want I want the entire Star Trek fan to be discussing bodily fluids and which ones bother them most. <laughs> uh, it is it is it is interesting it's, that like in different yeah. ways, like different Star Trek shows like are pushing boundaries in uh, uh, bo- like mm-hmm. boundaries of of 
prudishness and taste in different ways, like swearing in, in Discovery and Picard, which again didn't bother me, and I think it's right. fine. Uh, yeah. And then bodily fluids here. It's just sort of an interesting, interesting note. What yeah. what will Strange New Worlds t- test us with oh, next? No. <laughs> mm, let's see. I don't know. There's just so much, so much kinky no. sex on there. There's really that's why I think it's like yeah, it's gonna it. be the sex. Part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, he he has his kitchen. It's something about food. So maybe we'll be oh god, like your cu- culinary uh, like <laughs> uh, taste buds pushed. I don't know. <laughs> he invites he invites them over for dinner. It's like yes, and I <laughs> to this banana. <laughs> Spock's just like mm, fascinating, to... and Una's and Una's just just gone. <laughs> uh, I don't think that's what it's gonna be. <laughs> I don't know. You don't know. This could be it. This could be it. That's true. You never know. I want it. I demand it. Let's do it. This is strange new worlds. All right. We're calling it here. Um. Anyways, moving back on to <laughs> yes. the actual episode. Uh, um. So she's. Been, I love that she, when she gets she gets pooped out basically, and then they're like they're trying to be like, hey, you know, it's who hasn't gotten pooped out by an alien, and they go to like comfort her, and she like slaps them away, like go, don't touch me. Yeah, and I love that. I love that too, and I and I love and I actually this is where it gets into like the subtle bits for me that I like again. This yeah. is fairly standard sitcom plot, but we what we learn is. Tendi has actually was the one that signed them up for this because she wanted to like mm-hmm. ever, they're always complaining about not being able to like have the big adventure and so she said right. you can be kind of close to the action this way and I thought that the way she sort of that was fr- nice yeah it was very nice and I thought like what she expressed was kind of deep for her character about being like just like wanting to try to have connect with them wanting to try and be nice to them and it connects really well with her arc this season which is like she is someone who does sort of like she is nice because that is who she is but also because i feel like she over exerts herself for others and she's less selfish in a way where she needs to become more assertive and selfish um and so i think that that actually like in in a small way ties into that arc really kind of subtly and which is what i what i I appreciated most about this uh this storyline because i I think that that show just not necessarily growth, but just sort of like a nice touchstone for where she is. And then her mm-hmm. like expressing anger through the cube, which turns her into a scorpion at, at her anger, the <laughs> yes. like mood cube or whatever it is. Um, I thought was just a, a yeah. nice sort of like piece of like, this is where she's at right now. I feel if you put like the, the Boimler and their, their plot together, that sort of together makes the standard sitcom thing. But this part of it mm-hmm. is deeper and it has more like just, interaction between the characters and you, you get a feeling of advancement less than the other one where the, you know when we get to the part where we talk about Boimler that one seems too totally predictable about how that's going to turn out I I well we'll talk about Boimler because I I agree with you to a degree but I actually have there's a, some some even subtleties in that one that I actually appreciated as well okay. but we'll, we'll talk about it in a second so yeah I think yeah. that I again we'll we'll talk about the ending of this sequence but this storyline for Tendi I thought was really wonderful and and the rest of it like mm-hmm. I said is is like like the the gags are funny but nothing really particularly stands out and none of it is even particularly yeah. like super star trek ish other than just like general sci-fi nonsense like there's the there's the three little pigs thing that comes up too which is uh like the, the ghost yeah. of the pigs or whatever yeah, it was a book that makes the the characters come to life or something. That, not not holograms, but whatever they were just like. Yeah, it, yeah. my the only thing I could like think of like that would be specifically Star Trek referencing would be like the one episode uh, of Deep Space Nine where like you have like the rumpled stilt skin. If wishes were horses, mm-hmm. yeah. Which with the terrifying rumpled stilt skin, like oh my god, <laughs> scary yeah. thing. Um, but yeah, I guess it's best to move over to Boimler's storyline. Unless you had anything else to say about the Tendy one. No, I think that pretty much covers it. I I just really enjoyed the, everybody their interactions and the fact that we just got to to spend the day with them and and just watch everybody's emotional states kind of ratchet up in different directions mm-hmm. and they kind of collided. So I, I appreciated how that was played really well. Yeah, exactly. And and we'll we'll talk about how this resolves in just a minute because it sort of ties into Boimler. So shifting over to Boimler's storyline. This is the one where I agree with you. I thought it was entirely predictable, and I'll, I'll sort of set the stage for you to talk about some stuff with it. Um, but for the storyline here is basically Boimler kind of gets sidetracked when he's sort of off to sort of do stuff uh, with the with the other group, and he gets sidetracked by a group of other ensigns named the Red Shirts. 
uh, which is it's so perfect. cool because it makes them sound invincible. Exactly, I love I yeah. love that. Their whole thing is that they're trying to be command types. They want to hear Boimler like tell story about the Titans and Titan and stuff, and like see like oh they help each other level up basically. Exactly. So can... Yeah, but I I love that red shirt skag because it's it's yeah it's I I love the way it was delivered for me because it's it's. Obviously calling out the trope of, like, from the original series where, like, red shirts would always die, like, that everyone knows. And so it's, yeah. like, a gag that is, uh, like, fairly, like, a callback that pretty it's much It's almost universal knows. beyond Star Trek, even. Exactly. But the way it's delivered is, like, so undercut and subtle where they're just like, yeah, we're at the red shirts. So you think it makes us invincible. It's like it doesn't draw attention to itself like some lower other lower decks jokes do. And I thought that, that was yeah. great. Yeah. There's a couple in here that actually are, are like that too, just because we have a Kazinti, mm-hmm. and there's there's a joke in there that's also like if you don't know the animated series, it's like it just goes right over you. Which yeah, I lo- let's get to that because uh, Boimler just basically yeah. joins up with this group, and they're just like we'll make you we'll make you uh, you know command material. You really show your stuff, and um, of course, like everything, it starts with a makeover. Exactly. You have you have Jennifer <laughs> the Andorian getting to see her, and I like yeah. and the Kazinti that's been in the background yes. this whole time, uh, as you say, yeah. and the. Best, I'll let you explain it because I I caught it and I was pleased with myself that I caught it. But I, you're the you're the TAS expert, so I want to let you explain it. I swear I did I did okay. actually catch it. I'm not like saying that just because like I no, totally no, no, I caught did, it. Yeah. <laughs> no no no. Uh, so basically, uh, they take them into uh, this room with like a mirror, and so they're you know like giving him different clothes. It's like, it's just like this uniform, it just isn't working. It was like, it's the same uniform we all wear. <laughs> just like, it's like, yes, but are you wearing it or is it wearing you? Yes, so yes. they basically like tailor his, his uniform. She fixes his hair and the Kazinti is like, you know, you have to adjust your posture. You can't be like this. And he bends all down and it looks all droopy. He goes, you have to stand up straight. <laughs> but what he's doing when he does that, when he looks all bent over, there is the, Kazinti Telepath in the Slaver Weapon, the original animated series episode, who is this kind of sad sack kind of cat. And because he's has to read everybody's mind, he's just like tortured, basically. So he looked like that, this hunched over and all sad. So I, the nice little call out to that. That was, yeah, that was really very, very, that was a very deep cut. And I was like, I was yeah. like, oh, dang. And actually, I might have actually gotten it wrong slightly because I it, are not all Kazintis bent. Because I remember all Kazintis in the series being all bent over. They were all like bent that. some. Yeah, but he, the the telepath was ex- even more so. He was gotcha. just sort of like the most. Yeah. He was the most sad yeah, sacky of them they, all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, exactly. Uh, uh, and the other ones kind of, they, they carry themselves tipped but bigger. And he was mm. just like way down low and yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. So, uh, yeah, so I, 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 cause in my, my official review on my, my YouTube channel, I, I call that out, but I say all of them. So you even got more deep, deeper. Oh yeah, no, they, they all do to a point, but yeah. Cool, cool. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't shame myself publicly, is what you're saying. So no, no, like, no, 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 <laughs> no, definitely not. No. Nope. Good, good. I mean, but that was definitely that specific one, just but especially the way he mm-hmm. looked and everything mm-hmm. like that. That. So yeah. So what you're saying is I got it wrong. It's fine. It's fine. No, 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 no. <laughs> It's fine. It's okay. I'll be. You shamed. got it more right than ninety nine point nine percent of the people watching it will probably have no idea what that it's even fine. is. So fine. my ego. It's fine. All right. No, it's fine. Let's move on. I'm Let's happy that on. you. Let's move on. You know that the animated series exists. I mean, hey, that's like yeah, yeah, half the battle. Because <laughs> no, knowledge is power. Anywho, um, yeah. Moving yes. on though, we we. And by the way, I'm going to make a real quick yeah, yeah, uh, Star Trek Day Day thing that I'm. This is my one annoyance that I'm going to, my grievance that I'm going to air. Uh, there was none, zero, not even like mm. a screenshot inside of the, like, here's all the things that have happened in Star Trek for the last 48 or 54 year, five years. Um, there was no animated series at all. That is kind of And I do like that. It's weird because it's now getting more light shined on it that it probably has in a while because of lower decks and all of the little easter eggs that are being called out Mm so more people are noticing it and i it just seemed weird to me that it was not even mentioned yeah i'm I'm like honestly the one that surprised i mean i i could see them not doing a like little piece on it like they did the rest of the series on star trek right but i'm surprised they didn't even have it in the like they had like the sort of uh like uh, what, what am I blanking on the words? The, the montage, the montage, sort of like real, the 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 mm-hmm. excitement real. I forget what they're called. They're they're like real yeah. of uh, hype real. I forget what they're called. There's an actual term yeah, for yeah. them, but I blanking on it. But regardless, um, I'm surprised mm-hmm. it wasn't even in that. 
Like there was not even a shot at all in there that I was. There's like, not an obligatory yesteryear shot, which is what they always put, yeah. pull out. You know something from that episode. Yeah, the so. Spock kills his dog episode. At least you got a you got a reference. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, exactly. But yeah, no. So yeah, so that of, was I just had to call that out because I'm just like, hey, yeah. <laughs> we haven't talked since then. Yeah, it's it is kind of um, it is kind of yeah. I was I was right there because we were watching Star Trek Day together. I was kind of yeah. upset with you. I was like, yeah. come on, give it a give it a little <laughs> something. It's 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 still yeah. worthwhile. Um, I mean, if you want wanted to do a panel it's not like we couldn't go on there and actually be those people mm-hmm. but whatever that's mm-hmm. fine. it's fine it's no big deal no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah so there's yeah. the i forgot where we're at oh uh oh so no so we're the makeover basically yes. it's like and he's at the end he's like he's got like shoulder pads and his his hair has been i guess feathered or not feathered, but like shaved on the side but to me it almost looked like he had fake gray <laughs> put into it yep yep um and he was you know, he basically had this command presence. Yeah. So. My and then my favorite bit comes next when they sort of like have him do a class on like do giving speeches, and he's really bad at yeah. first, but then he gives an excellent one that just is like super. Like I was legitimately like, that's a great speech. Um, and it he like it suddenly turns so like the entire room around him looks like it's the Enterprise D uh, bridge, mm-hmm. which was fantastic, and everyone else is just like clapping and and just like. Really enjoy it. What's happening to him is what we perceived on stage when we were doing night shift. I yeah, think. it's like yeah, your your brain just like fills in all of the stuff around you, and you're like, oh wait, this is just a stage with nothing on it. Yeah. So I, I yeah, it, it was a was nice, it was a nice cut because when it like hard cuts, he's still on stage, and there were five lights yes. behind him. If you noticed, mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but it was a nice little. I, I thought it was a nice call call out. I, we'll give them credit for it. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> you know, it, it, even if it wasn't intentional, someone should just say it was. So, whichever background artist did that, you're yeah. you're awesome. You did it. <laughs> yes. uh, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that was really great. But yeah. then we sort of continue on, and this is where I'll I'll talk about like my bit about why I thought this was actually more subtle than than maybe the, at least for me is typically mm-hmm. in these types of storylines the whole concept of what it's sort of built upon is that the character will go off and then there's a moment and the episode sets this up where they're like oh well you don't want to hang out with the, your old friends right we're the cool ones and there's yeah. and, and the guy the lead sort of guy of the red shirt says that and when they see sort of Tendy and the other crew sort of freaking out over there when Tendy's turning into a scorpion and <laughs> What I liked about this, though, is typically in a like normal sitcom affair, there is almost always a moment of the main character being like, yeah, maybe I should hang out with the cool yeah. folks. But in this bit, the, at no point did Boimler ever yeah. belittle his friends. And when they said that, he instantly stood up for them. And I actually really, really appreciated that because it shows how much like he is actually – um, grown and actually sees them as his friends and, and does not have any hesitance about being around them, which was slightly different, especially when it came to Mariner last season. This season, he's just he's just like, no, like, why why would you ever make fun of Like, he, it doesn't even, like, he doesn't accept yeah. it for a moment. And I really appreciated yeah. that. And then when Tendi starts turning into a scorpion and then starts ransacking the crew, she starts, she goes into the bar and starts destroying everything. And the red shirts sort of go in and start speechifying. <laughs> like on top of each other. One, cause it's like, Oh, he, the person's okay. Jennifer's saying a speech. And, oh, now this person. Uh, and the, okay. There's too many people talking. Exactly. <laughs> and I, what, my favorite bit is like all the crew members that, that are listening to them are just like getting glow, like anime eyes <laughs> and just like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, so that was, and then really they get good. confused as more voices, and then and lo- having uh, what is he? Uh, you know, it's like we're trying to inspire the crew. We are the crew. The crew, <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly. And this is another yeah, piece of like, this that I loved, and how I loved that it showed where Boimler at, is at. Because again, it's yeah. normally in these types of scenes, it would be Boimler would try to do that too, and then realize what he has to do. But mm-hmm. no, Boimler in this is like no, that you like instantaneously. Yeah. He's like no, he springs into action and he debases himself. In order to like constantly like like so I was like give me a like varying varying heats of candles for the cake and like slams it in his face to try to get uh, <laughs> Tendy to to laugh and it's really really good, but and it, it's a it's a funny bit, but I really really I, I this yeah. is why I actually really thought that this worked so well for me is because Boimler had zero hesitation about actually going in 
and and debasing yeah. himself, making himself look weird. There was no like second guessing of himself. There was no second guessing of his friends or belittling of his friends. And that felt like yeah. not a huge dramatic shift from the the typical plot, but it was like just enough that it felt really endearing and and like yeah. its own sort of Star Trek flavoring on this sort of storyline. And I really like yes. that. I, that's seriously the one thing I was going to say is like it does have that same the same structure, but it doesn't have the same outcome or the way that there it's played inside of it. So like that's exactly. why I think it's not. You don't watch it and go, okay, I'm bored now, but because it's like, exactly. oh, okay, he's never once going to be like, oh yeah, I hate those guys. Let's go do this, you know. So he he always knows that they're his friends. He sticks up for them no matter what, and then like you said at the end, didn't hesitate to to help Tendi. In in a stupid, silly way. <laughs> Computer, taffy, honey, shrimp, soda, corn, steak, chicken, nugget, crispy <laughs> lemon, rock, candy, chili, gravy, chocolate sundae, hot. And it's kind of the same way that the the Packlet plot goes as well. Mm. It's also standard, but there's enough variation on it that it's like the 21st century version of it. Yeah, and, and I agree with you uh, very, very much so. It's like it's that, but it's definitely just twisted. And for me, the thing that makes it stand out the most is just how earnest – and endearing it is for these characters, especially Boimler. Um, I, I really sh- thought... He's grown a lot. Exactly. Like, this this is what I was worried about. When when the episode started and we saw Boimler go off with these guys, I was actually worried that this was going to be, like, a kind of a repetition of his character where he's just like, I want to be a commander again. And But but it just really shows... Where we're getting a reset of the thing that we were worried about where it's like, oh, it's going... It's slowly sliding back towards season one. Exactly. But it, the, in, in reality, what this shows to me is how Boimler, like, he, in, he knows how to be a real commander. And that comes out mm-hmm. at the end and is revealed at the end, like, the the uh, red shirt guy who's the leader in charge of the red shirts whose name I kind of forget. Uh, he he asks um, Casey. Yeah, Casey. Thank you. He asks Ransom. Mm-hmm. Oh, can I get to, to be the acting captain on the bridge, which is sort of like the 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 carrot that they were all sort of running after this whole episode. And he gets it. And Ransom just but Ransom is like, yeah, sure, whatever. I don't care. And when he gets whatever. it, it's only there for like two seconds. Where Shax takes over and sends <laughs> him to clean up the poop from the from the from the the pack lead. But the yeah. uh, but. Ransom actually takes a moment to stop and say, hey, good job with your leadership there uh, in, in the mess hall or whatever it was called, um, Boimler. And and yeah. I really like that because, again, it just shows that he actively has grown. He is not the one who's, like, searching how to be a good leader. He is a good leader, and a good leader knows that, like, sometimes it, you have to debase yourself and throw cat and candles in your face <laughs> to, to get the job done. And I just, I really like that. And I what I also loved is that you know, we've seen him studying all of these captains uh, over the the course of these two years, or mentioning them at least. Mm-hmm. And he said, like, a good captain doesn't copy another command uh, style. It's like, you don't think Riker does that, do you? So, you know, clearly he's not Picard. So he knew enough about that and then kind of reinforced that. So you could see, okay, even though he is very much interested in all these other command commanders and captains he's not going to duplicate or try to just copy them yeah. he's learning from them and creating his own command style exactly and i i really really thought that that was great so i i think that what the strength of this episode is for both boimler and for tendy because i really like the moment at the end where uh rutherford even rutherford and mariner sort of said like we shouldn't have been tamping down your enthusiasm we should have been encouraging it yeah and also tendy sort of like continuing on this path of like needing to learn to be more stand upish for herself if that's a word i can use it's like the the strength of this episode is that while it is not necessarily the big bombastic one i think it really is a nice touchstone and an important touchstone for where all these characters are and while they are still yeah. on the same arcs that they've been on since season one, they have certainly progressed. And while this episode didn't necessarily yeah. push any of them forward all that much, maybe Boimler a little bit, um, it was more just like, here's where they are at compared to where they were, and you can see a marked sense of growth with them. And I thought that that was really nice and important. And and why episodes like this, while not the big memorable ones, are the ones that are important along this type of journey for characters like this. And depending on what happens for the rest of the season, this might be that sort of anchoring episode. And then as things start to progress towards a a season finale, Mm -hmm. you know, things ratchet up and change. So this is sort of like the here's baseline. Now things will change. Exactly. It's like this is where we've gotten them to from season one. Yeah. And now we're going to even change it from here uh, for the final like four episodes of the season and going into season three. So, yeah, I, 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 you know, the more I think about it, the more I really like this episode that, again, it's just not. (laughs) 
I know I've talked myself into like, oh, wait, this was kind of like a, not a myth, but it was just sort of like, yeah, it was good. Yeah. To my like, oh, you know, I actually really kind of like this episode quite a bit. Yeah. I, I, I'm on the same wavelength. Again, it's, it's not going to be the one where I'm like, oh, yeah, it's up there with Crisis Point or. Not uh, Crisis. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's not like up there with that. <laughs> Um, or even some, yeah. or even like last episode, like last episode, I would actually put in it like a top oh, tier yeah. as well. Um, so it's not yeah. on that level, but it's one that I really think is is necessary for character arcs mm-hmm. like this, and necessary for shows. And and like I said at the top, is something that I'm I'm missing a little bit from Star Trek Discovery and Picard. Um, and wish those shows just have, every once in a while just have those one off episodes with the characters just yeah. get to futz around. Well, and hopefully, Strange New Worlds will kind of be that. Mm-hmm. And depending on how Picard works, it feels like. Maybe you'll get that one episode where I want to watch them when they go to, you know, Whole Foods <laughs> in, in, in the 21st century. I don't know. I'm just making something up. Um, but, you know, there might be that kind of Nepenthe sort of episode for, in Picard. Where mm. you, like, there's always one that has like 90 or 80 percent of it is like kind of like, oh, I can go back and revisit that. But then the other stuff is like, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that I don't yeah. really have much more to say about this episode other than I, I think Except it's, for... I like it. oh, oh, yes! The, yes! The oh, very oh, end. I, I forget. This This yes. had me dying with laughter. I was literally rolling around. <laughs> yes. Do you, you want to say it or I'll say it? Uh, go ahead. Uh, so, they, so, at the end of the episode, all the Lower Deckers are back in their bunks hanging out. And I forget what it was called, but it was like the the, the gem of summoning or something. It was basically like a, like a D&D type of thing that Mariner has, like a D&D type gem that allows them to... Or something from Stargate, even. They yeah. have like those little stones you know, that connect with the, uh, the... I think it was like in the second to last season or whatever. It basically connected Vala and oh, uh, yeah. Daniel across, like across the galaxies time. or whatever. So, yeah. 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 Um, kind of like that. Yeah. But anyways, it's a thing that allows them to just project their voices wherever they want in the galaxy. And so, like, what are we going to do? Like, <laughs> we're going to call up, uh, I can never say his name, the Tar Monster from Skin Ar- of Evil. Armis. Armis. Yeah. Uh, they, uh, the Armis from Skin of Evil, the thing that kills Tasha Yar, who's always like, oh, I'm evil and I hate everybody and you're all going to die. And, and so... <laughs> They call him, and he's just, he's just, like, sitting on the, like, he's just a tar monster on the planet. It's like, oh, I'm really sad and hate everything. And they just start I wish there was him. somebody here for me to torture. Yeah, and they're just like, oh, you're going to have to find us, Armus. He's just pissing yeah. him off. But I just love when it's like, they're like, shh, shh, shh. You know, they can <laughs> yeah. hear the people in the background, kind of like they're on a phone, basically. Yes. You know? Oh, my God. That that has to be yeah. my favorite, one of my favorite callback gags that Lower Dex has done. It is so good. And just a little throwaway bit. It's just it's it's chef's kiss to the episode. Yeah, I love that. It's it's similar in I think structure to like the the O'Brien one from from last yes. season where it's like it's just tacked mm-hmm. on at the end. Mostly mm-hmm. only tre- like deep cut Trekkies will get it. I mean O'Brien's not that mm-hmm. deep cut, but you have to be like it's yeah, not something but... if you don't know anything other than lower decks you're not going to get. But it's yeah. it's a it's a really really funny bit that I just really adored. Yeah. <laughs> We're touching your stuff. What stuff? Where? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I do agree with you. The best part of it is just them. It's like, oh, no, sh- sh- shut up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that was so perfect. Yeah. Yeah. A wonderful end to the episode. Yeah. I was, I was, quite I hope literally. they use that for something in the future. It'd be fun if that was just like something that they, they seeded in, pocket away, and it ends up, but yeah, it ends up helping at the end of like in episode 10 or something. Yeah. Like a Chekhov's weird talkie gem or whatever. <laughs> When you introduce a talking rock in yeah, or a yeah. rock that you can talk with in episode six, it has to come back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So ultimately, yeah, I, yeah, that was a great little end cap of the episode. And yes. I, 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 like I said, I really like this episode. I, I, it's not my favorite, mm-hmm. but it's by no means one that I didn't enjoy heavily. So, if that's the way. The more it. that we spoke, I think what I really enjoyed is the fact that it it was like standard kind of structure. But what they did with it is what was important. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So yeah, that made it better. Yeah, exactly. I think I totally agree with you. So yeah, that's that's kind cool. of my thoughts on that. Um, yeah. Do you want to yeah. talk about maybe some pins that oh, I was yes. trying? I was trying to say <laughs> I was trying to find a natural Subtle. segue. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, you know what Armis might need to cheer him up. <laughs> Is some pins, <laughs> fan sets pins. Yes, uh, don't think that's gonna work. I, I, I don't know how would he. It just he put it on and it would just like it absorbed so into suck, him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so thank you. Now that we have made this like An elegant, totally transition. seamless, elegant transition. Yes. Uh, if you want to uh, get a discount on fan sets, which is a company that has pins for 
everything Star Trek. I mean, they we have got all the characters from Lower Decks. We've got a Lower Decks com badge. They've just introduced the uh, Wrath of Com. Or Wrath of Com. Right? <laughs> Wrath of Com. That should be a <laughs> it's thing. It's a Wrath of Com badge. Yes, yes that should exactly. be a thing. Anyways, sorry. <laughs> No, they've they've introduced that. They have basically a com badge, or not a com badge, but a badge program. So pretty much anything that you've ever seen as a badge is going to show up at some point, probably in this pin collection. And but they also don't have. It's not just Star Trek. They have uh, DC Comics. They have old television shows. It's just like it basically, it's like whatever your fandom is is probably somebody at the company is interested in too. So they've made a badge for it or a pin or, you know, so, but if you'd like a discount, you can go and get a discount on anything, even like a gift card, uh, a 10% off by using the uh, discount code drawn, all one word capitals drawn. Yeah. Drawn. Uh, But yeah, yeah, sounds good. I, I, I enjoy them. They are awesome. So yeah, go check them out. Yes. I am going to get the, uh, what is the new one that just came out? And maybe it was the Wrath of Khan one, but there was something that I was just like, "Oh, I've got to get that." So it, you, you know us and fans, we we are we need to collect everything, gotta catch them all, sort of thing. So, well, that's true. Yeah, that's we we were joking that uh, there needs to be the the collector's pin that the guy was wearing in the second uh, season episode two. What is that called? The collectors. The oh yeah 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 um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. I don't know. I don't remember that episode. Uh, the Keish- the puppet uh, Keishan. Okay, oh, yeah, Keishan. Yes, Keishan, Keishan, Keishan his eyes, with his eyes open. Yeah, that's yeah. It. yeah. Yeah, uh, but yeah, so that's I I would love to uh, see that as a pin because I think it would be like the, it's sort of the symbol of the the Star Trek collector <laughs> basically. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's great. So uh, yeah. Ah, uh, well, that so yes, I think wraps out our episode today. I think so. Yeah, yep. I hope everyone uh, enjoys and- it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, definitely. And uh, is there anything? Where can we find you online? Oh yeah, I gotta check you out. Your other hawk, hawk my wares. Gotta hawk my wares. Uh, Yes, you can find me on Jesse Gender on YouTube, where I do my sort of video essay type stuff, um, going (laughs) down to two videos a month um, there, but uh, making them bigger and better. So that'll be really exciting. Um, I'm also got a fun one coming up too. I do. Uh, I got a few fun ones coming up actually. I hope. Uh, At least I hope they are. We'll see. Um, (laughs) And then we. We, I have a secondary channel called Jesse Gender After Dark where I do reviews of things like Marvel's um, Marvel's uh, what, if, what If and a few other things. I'll probably be reviewing the Hawkeye show there as well. I also review all every episode of Star Trek, but that's on my main channel as well. And then the uh, couple other things. I also have another podcast called What the Frell where I do Farscape rewatch. Uh, well, for me, my first time watching it, rewatching it with my co-host uh, Vera Wild of Council of Geeks, who is absolutely lovely, and we kind of have fun going through that show. And then I also have a Patreon page that you can support me at and help me keep doing what I do. And I also have a Twitter uh, page, I guess is what you call it, Twitter handle, uh, where I rant about trans issues and star trek and and whatever the hell's on my mind peanut butter this week so whatever whatever (laughs) whatever comes on my whatever comes on my weird brain usually spills out on twitter at some point so you can also follow me there that's all my stuff great uh you can find me uh on trek geeks uh we're going to be doing infinite trek which is a once a month round table and uh it's been a little bit delayed off and on because we want to we have a an episode coming up where we're talking about headcanon we're going to have a Noah, Av- Noah Averbeck Katz, who played Rin in Discovery. He's going to join us with his headcanon, which is probably going to include his wife, Mary Wiseman, who mm-hmm. plays Tilly. So that should be fun. Uh, but we it's just trying to get everybody together. There's been a convention season, then everybody got sick. <laughs> it's just like, so, so it's the show that's been a little bit on hiatus, but it's coming back, and we're going to get that moving and if you go to twitter you can follow me as geek filter and i will tweet stuff out about easter eggs uh and there's gonna be a fun fun project i'm starting which i will talk about in the future so a little bit of a like vague posting there i guess and um always yeah so that's where, where you can find me sweet um one other thing that i actually quick forgot might as well announce it now is that if you live in the seattle area or the redmond area i'm actually going to be at rusty con uh in two weeks oh. yeah not this weekend but next weekend uh because i'm actually going to be on several panels including uh this might interest you aaron uh well i'm sure mm-hmm. it will interest you i am going to be moderating the guest the like guest of honor panel who the guest of honor is David Gerald. 
uh, which oh, will nice. be super cool. I get to ask Fantastic. him questions for for thirty minutes and then uh, hand it over to other people to ask him questions. So it'll be it'll be a fun time. I need to not freak out too much uh, in that, and then figure out exactly what I'm going to ask him. So it'll be kind of fun. Great. Uh, and David Gerald may be showing up, uh, popping over to Drawn to Trek at some mm-hmm. point too. I know we were planning on that. So yeah, I probably will. Yep. Uh, I'll probably mention it to him when we're when I see him. Nice. So. I don't know how much time Great. I'll get. I don't know how much one-on-one yeah, time no, I'll yeah. get with them, but if I do, <laughs> yeah. I'll probably mention it to them. So. Cool. Yeah, that's fantastic. I bet it's got to be nice to go out and kind of be among people and just you know see, experience see folks. something beyond a screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's a little bit nerve wracking, but it should be fun. I also went to PAX yeah. West a few few weeks ago, and and they did a good job of like screening everyone to make sure that they mm-hmm. uh, they were all vaccinated. But it was still sort of like, oh, people. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I totally get that. Like, even when you think it's a completely safe, there's something in the back of your head going, uh, it's not, and it's not even going out. And I mean, there's, I mean, the COVID thing of it too is, is, is anxiety inducing, but even beyond that, it's just like, I haven't yeah. been around this many people in a while. And it's just like a yeah. lot for someone already with social anxiety. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so Totally. That's where it's just like, I'm going to go use the restroom and be back in 30 mm-hmm. minutes. <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, yeah, so that, that's where I'll be if you're in the Seattle Great. Redmond area. So come check that Let's out. Go. Um, yeah, it should be fun. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining us, and we will talk to you next time. So uh, live long and prosper. Live long and prosper. Don't you give me that sarcastic Vulcan salute 